Overnight, Xpeng have unveiled, or at least car news try and have unveiled Xpeng's new G6 E-Rev. Now, I personally own the G6, the all-electric version. I've got no interest, to be honest, in purchasing an E-Rev version, but I know a lot of people do, and it's also a really interesting tech because it does put these plug-in hybrid technology we're seeing in a lot of cars today, makes it really look like it's maybe five or six years old, which actually it is in many cases. Because these new E-Revs from Xpeng and other brands are providing technology that we just do not see in plug-in hybrids on the market in the West today. I mean, massively advanced. We're talking 430 kilometers of range from a plug-in hybrid with 350 kilowatt charging, enabling battery charging speeds 10 minutes, 10 to 80%. This is next-gen tech. And it's why I keep on saying to people, if you want a plug-in hybrid or an e-rev, you want some sort of hybrid, give it another six months because this is what's going to be on the market. It is far superior to what's on the market today. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. YouTube's new algorithm means that you're often not getting all of our videos in your feed. There's 7,500. I'm pretty sure you're probably not seeing a lot of them. In the description, there is a link to our newsletter. Click on that and you can get an update every day of all the latest news in the electric car industry. I have said in previous videos, guys, that a lot of plug-in hybrids, most of them, they're generally, not always, but generally an internal combustion car that's been basically modified to have a big battery pack put in it somewhere. But generally e-revs, as I've confirmed by speaking to numerous engineers in China, including a head of powertrain at Xpeng, their e-rev is just another version of their EV. They've basically modified their EV, the G6, to enable it to be able to have a small engine. Now it's quite small and that engine does not power the wheels. It simply recharges the battery. Enabling this car to have potentially 1,200 kilometers of range, CLTC of course, but still that's a pretty impressive range figure. And you're talking about much better economy. In the real world, you're gonna get far better economy than a plug-in hybrid. And the reason is because you probably aren't gonna to need to run it on fuel 99% of the time, if not more than that. Because how often are you gonna drive more than 400 kilometers, right? Not often, but if you do in one trip, more than 400 kilometers. But if you do, you can stop and charge that battery, right? You can charge it in 10 minutes. Whereas a lot of plug-in hybrids, they have 30, 40, 50 kilowatt DC charging. Very, very slow. And they might only have between 50 to 100 kilometers of EV on the range. Very different with Xpeng's new E-Revs. So the technology is certainly coming a long, long way. Looking at the specs here, I believe it's running quite a big battery pack. And that's why the G6 E-Rev is heavier by a couple of hundred kilos than the non-E-Rev, than the electric version. If you look at the G6, it looks almost the same. It'd be very hard to tell that this is an E-Rev because it looks exactly the same as the G6. And I should also mention there will be a G7 version of this that will be an E-Rev as well. So the G7, I've done videos on that. I'll put some of those in the description. There's an X9 minivan. They'll have an E-Rev version of that. And there's also the P7 Plus. That's confirmed to be an E-Rev version coming as well. Getting back to the G6, it is the same size as the electric version. There's no difference in the size. And like I said, the cars look almost identical. Power is the same as well. Single E-motor in the rear axle, so it's rear-wheel drive, 218 kilowatt. The actual internal combustion engine is from Chang'an, and it has a 1.5 liter turbocharged internal combustion engine for 110 kilowatt. That's 148 horsepower. Not a lot of power. It's really just there for efficiency. And like I said, it just charges the battery. It doesn't run, actually power the wheels like plug-in hybrids often will. Now, correction on the engine, it's actually a Dong'an powertrain, which is a subsidiary of Chang'an. The G6 E-Rev has an EVE battery or EVE battery made lithium ion phosphate, which is the same um, battery company that provides the batteries for the standard Xpeng G6 EV version. We don't know the battery pack capacity, but we believe it's 55.8 kilowatt hours. So 56 kilowatt hour battery pack, meaning it's a big battery pack. I mean, that's a significantly bigger battery than what you're getting in a BOD Shark, which is why this car should get approximately 450 kilometers of range CLTC, probably about 350 kilometers of range 
on the WLTP cycle and possibly, you know, close to that in the real world, considering the size of this battery and the efficiency of x EVs as well, which are very, very efficient. Charging speeds, it's going to have 5C charging. So between 350 to 400 kilowatt charging. And that means it can charge from 10 to 80% in 10 minutes. But the other advantage of this battery is apparently in low temperature environments, meaning minus 30 degrees Celsius, it will charge in 15 minutes. So very fast charging, regardless of the temperature. Car News China also says this, and this is obviously from XPeng themselves. The batteries include resistance to surface temperatures of 1000 degrees Celsius, 80 ton side pressure. And then a lot of that's due to the giga casting, which XPeng kind of um, incorporated after they saw what Tesla was doing and 2000 joule impacts from underneath. The G6 is said to be cheaper than the electric version. The E-Rev version should be a little bit cheaper. Not, not a big difference. I'm going to guess it'll be a couple of thousand dollars cheaper. Will its car be coming to other markets outside of China? I mean, the G6 is sold in, I believe, 35 countries worldwide. I think it is, actually. I think if you're getting the G6 in your market, good chance not every market will get it, but many of them will from what I've been hearing. Guys, what do you think? What are your thoughts on this car? I am... Um, you know, I've never been a plan of, uh, I've never been a big fan of hybrids, but if I was going to get one, this would probably be it. Now, actually, the the X9 version would be it. But honestly, I'm all in on EVs. I don't think hybrids are actually necessary. But if people think they're necessary, this is going to be the one you want to have a look at. What are your thoughts? Thanks for watching. The Sydney EV International Motor Show. If you want to get a fifty percent discount on your tickets. All you got to do, click the link in the description and use the promotion code that's in the description. Just copy and paste that. Now, I should mention there's only 200 tickets available per day. So if you go to use the promo code and you can't get a ticket, wait till the next day. Don't wait until the day before the show to get your tickets because otherwise you'll probably miss out on getting the 50% discount.